And let's bring in now our Monday panel, Joe Hildebrand here with me in Sydney. Great Hello, to see Joe. you. Hello, I love it to see and you. And Andrew Carswell from Headline Advisory in Canberra. Kazi, were you up oh, until 4am watching the tennis? I wasn't, to be honest. I stayed up and watched a bit of the tour, but I, I couldn't couldn't hang around for the uh, for Wimbledon, unfortunately. Uh, well, Getting old, Shari. Well, Joe, I mm. bet you were watching, if not Wimbledon, Fadden all on night, Saturday night, night. by election. Yeah, that, was the, that was the, the only television. game in town. That was the only <laughs> contest in town. Um, yeah, it was a really, it was a really interesting one, the Fadden by election. I think um, the idea that this is a sort of, I, I liken it in my column tomorrow to sort of Dunkirk, where survival is victory. Um, the fact that you've retained this seat and gotten a small swing towards you is good, it's great, it means the Liberal brand isn't dead, but I don't think it's necessarily this kind of, you know, clarion call, this champion sort of rallying cry to mm. the Liberal Party banner. It's basically a result that should never have been in doubt and which only really was in doubt because of the unprecedented uh, swing to a sitting government and a mm. big swing too in Aston uh, just a few uh, weeks or months ago. So I, th yeah. I think... You know, Fadden is actually business as usual rather than a big sort of great leap forward for mm. the Libs. Well, look, the argument, Andrew Carswell, is that often governments see a swing of around 5% against them in a by-election. But, you know, this was returning the 25 or 3% swing towards the LNP that it lost at the federal election last year. So it is a good result. But what do you think, Andrew, that it says about how the community are reacting towards the voice and cost of living. Oh, Shari, I think that's certainly an element of that. Um, mm. And I think if you look at the, 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 the history of by-elections uh, for oppositions in opposition-held seats, it's roughly an average of about 1%. So they've exceeded that. So they didn't, they didn't escape with this victory. They, they, it was pretty resounding. Um, but I think it's a clear indication that, I mean, Anthony Albanese is not, you know, the most beloved figure on Broad Beach or any, any beach along uh, the Gold Coast, but it's, an in, it's a slight indication that the gloss is coming off the Prime Minister. Uh, and the reason for that is, that is the perception that he is focused on other things, and the voice is one of those things, not to denigrate the voice, but he is focused on the voice and mm. other issues and not focused on alleviating the cost of living pressures that families are facing. And I, I think that's starting to bite. Is, is it enough to push the vote uh, to Peter Dutton's way more broadly? No, not yet. But I stress yet, because we're yet to see the full extent of the pain that will be felt in the economy when interest rates keep cr cr uh, getting higher, when, mm. when the energy bills that people are paying are going up at 20% a year, and when, um, when the cost of living is still sitting at 6% annual increases. Mm. Mm. I mean, Joe, you know, we saw that Anthony Albanese came out and, and made some comments this afternoon yep. uh, that the Yes campaign needs, yep. needs to do a better job. But really, you know, this is ultimately down to him if the voice doesn't get up. But I think it is a reflection, don't you, on the fact that people feel the government isn't worried about the issues that are most affecting them. Yeah, I think that is actually fair enough. I think at a time when you've got... When you're worried about your own future and you're worried about your own house coming or going, uh, you're going to be much less disposed to be worrying about other people's future. And when the voice gets raised, um, people think, well, hang on, why are you even talking about that when there's this crisis, when there's this sort of abyss that I'm looking looking at? So I think, um, you, you, I, think, I think you will see more of a focus on cost of living pressures over the next couple of months from the government. The government has had an extraordinarily long honeymoon period. It's sat very, it very high in the polls for a very long yes. time. And given that this cost of living crisis has been going on for pretty much that whole time, I'm not surprised that now a little bit of the skill is starting to come off and they are starting to say, actually, you've been in power for a year now, maybe some of this is your fault. Mm. Um, whether that's fair or not, I'm not so sure. But I think hopefully when, when the, the pressures ease towards the end of the year, that will be better for The Voice and better for the government. Well, if the pressure eases, if it could, it could get worse, of course, when people come off their fixed home loans and, and yeah. have higher rate rises.